For most of us, electricity on boats is scary, mysterious stuff. It's little wonder marine batteries come in black boxes. This stuff can be very intimidating, even for the very experienced. So we asked Don Ely, longtime expert and professor at Maine Maritime Academy, to show us what we need to know. So we have the confidence to untangle the electrical systems on our own boats. In this series, we'll walk you through a simple two battery system. And we're gonna start at the power source, batteries. Today what I'd like to do is look at batteries and uh, the typical battery that we find on board uh, most vessels is what's called a lead acid battery, meaning that it uh, works with both uh, a chemical reaction with lead and acid. And uh, what we have here today is a cutaway of a typical 12 volt battery. We've got six individual cells here. Each one of these cells produces about 2.2 volts of electricity. Uh, combined, uh, it's actually a total of 13.2 volts. Uh, we call it a 12 volt battery, but in reality it's actually 13.2. The way this uh, operates is, uh, this is typically filled with uh, sulfuric acid. And we've got two plates here. One is, uh, has got lead on it, and the other plate has lead dioxide on it. And these are little separators between those plates. And we've got a chemical reaction that occurs between the lead and the lead dioxide and the uh, sulfuric acid, and that produces uh, electrons or uh, electrical pressure voltage. Now this is called a flooded battery, meaning that uh, it's flooded with uh, liquid uh, sulfuric acid. There's also a couple of other ways we can uh, build uh, lead acid batteries. Um, one is called a gel cell, where instead of having uh, uh, the sulfuric acid in a liquid form, we have it in a gel form. But the construction of the battery itself internally is, is very similar in that we have the two plates uh, and the sulfuric acid in a gel form for that chemical reaction. The third type of battery, which is uh, most popular I guess now or newest on the market now, is what we call an absorbed glass mat battery or an AGM battery. Now the neat thing about the AGM battery is, instead of having the uh, sulfuric acid either in a liquid or a gel form here, uh, it's actually in plates or in, in, on fiberglass mat between the plates. So here's an absorbed glass mat battery. It's uh, perfectly sealed. We never have to get into it for any reason. And this battery can be mounted in any position. We can mount it uh, on its side. We can actually mount it upside down. Um, and that's a pretty handy thing to be able to have a battery to be mounted in any position that we would like it to be mounted in. So let's talk a little bit about the chemistry that, uh, that takes place inside uh, the battery. And again, whether it's wet cell, uh, gel cell, or AGM, uh, the chemistry internally is the same. So here's what happens. We've got lead, PB, and we've got lead dioxide, um, PBO2 and we have sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4. So when we have those in combination in the, in the battery itself, um, we wind up with the two uh, posts here, a positive and a negative post. And, and then when we obviously connect uh, uh, a load to it, this chemical reaction is going to take place. And what we wind up with then, when this chemical reaction happens, is we wind up with PbSO4, which is lead sulfate, plus water, H2O, and in a simplistic fashion, we also then wind up with electrons. And this is where we get our electricity from this, from this chemical reaction. Now the challenge is that in a wet cell battery or a flooded battery like this, when this chemical reaction takes place, the water and the sulfuric acid tend to stratify. So the water is lighter than uh, the sulfuric acid. It's going to come up to the top of the cell here. The sulfuric acid is going to be down at the bottom. And that's going to give, give us less area of these plates that the chemical reaction can actually occur in. So there's some challenges there with a, a flooded or a wet cell battery with this stratification and then the area that this chemical reaction can actually take place on. So that's why they came up with gel cell batteries. And in a gel cell battery, instead of having the sulfuric acid in a liquid form that could stratify, it was in a gel form and uh, would not stratify. 
there were some challenges or there are some challenges with the gel cell battery also and one of those is that if you overcharge it you can actually break that gel down create a pressure inside the battery cell here and then pop the vents off and then the battery is uh, no longer usable uh, so there are some challenges around the gel cell battery with the charging so the latest uh, chemistry is the AGM battery, the absorbed glass mat battery, completely sealed. And those, uh, the, the glass mat that holds the sulfuric acid are actually similar to these dividers that we see here. And it's actually fiberglass that's impregnated with the uh, sulfuric acid. And so when this reaction takes place, uh, the only thing that happens is the reaction between the plate and the sulfuric acid directly connected to that, the, the plate and the absorbed glass mat. So we don't have this stratification that we talked about between uh, the sulfuric acid and the, and the water. It also produces a more efficient uh, charge and discharge. Um, and the battery is completely sealed. And so we don't have any venting going on. Um, you know, we can mount it in any position. And uh, it turns out to be a pretty handy thing on board a vessel not to have to maintain it. As opposed to our uh, traditional flooded battery, uh, most of you may be aware that um, if the level goes down inside the flooded battery, that then we would add uh, just pure water to it, usually distilled water to the battery. That's the only thing we lose in this chemical reaction is uh, H2O typically. And so uh, that's all we want to add back to the battery. But an absorbed glass mat battery or a gel cell battery, both of those eliminate the need for any of that uh, servicing of the battery. In fact, they're both completely sealed. So the other thing I'd like to talk about is battery size. And basically there's uh, a couple things we need to understand about this, these batteries. One is, uh, for an engine start battery, typically what we want to do is produce uh, a lot of electricity, a lot of electrons, in a short period of time. The other type of battery uh, is what we call a house battery uh, or a deep cycle battery. And that's a battery that we're going to use smaller amounts of electricity for, sh for longer periods of time, um, for 10, 12, 24 hours, whatever we need it to do before we recharge it. So when we're looking at batteries, uh, it's not just simply uh, the physical size of the battery. Uh, we need to look at whether the battery was designed for engine starting uh, or whether the battery was designed for deep cycle use. And physically, the size of the battery uh, is not necessarily going to determine its voltage. It's going to determine its capacity. All right, so this battery here was originally uh, an, a battery designed for engine starting. And if we look at the label on it here, it actually has uh, CCA 800 and MCA 1000. And what that's telling us is that the cold cranking amp capacity, the ability of this battery to produce amperage, uh, it can produce 800 amps actually at zero degrees Fahrenheit. That's what that uh, cold cranking amp rating is for. So it can produce 800 amps for 30 seconds. Uh, so the hope is that you'd be able to start the engine within that period of time. And the engine manufacturer is going to determine what cold cranking amp capacity is required of the, of the battery. Now most boats aren't operating at zero degrees Fahrenheit. So there is a marine cranking amp rating on here also. That's at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The battery is more efficient as it gets warmer. And this would be able to produce 1,000 amps for 30 seconds at 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So depending on w the application of the battery and what the engine manufacturer is looking for, uh, that's the capacity that we'd be looking for in this particular battery. So that's an engine start battery. On the other hand, this battery here is designed more for deep cycle use. This would be a house battery. We don't see a rating on this particular battery for cold cranking amps, but we do have a rating on this particular battery that says 32 amp hours at 20 hours. And essentially, that's telling us how many amps this can produce for 20 hours times 20. So 32, it looks like it's producing a little more than one and a half amps for 20 hours is the capacity rating on this particular battery for deep cycle use. And that's what that design is for. So essentially we have two styles of batteries. We have engine start and deep cycle. The chemistry is the same, but the structure internally is different in the, in the number of plates and the thickness of the plates.
uh, even though they're both 12-volt batteries, they're designed for two different uh, operations.